The face masks of the samurai are one of the most iconic features of the armor worn by Japan's old warrior elite. And though various warrior societies throughout world history had incorporated different types of masks, either as face protection or for ceremonial purposes, none quite compare to the stunning designs crafted for the samurai. The real distinctive factor that often differentiates Japanese face armor from other designs are their artistic styles coupled with practical usage for combat situations. Now, obviously, samurai face masks are not alone in that regard, but although other types existed around the world, the sheer depth of styles and variations is something that is very specific to the Japanese. So in this video, what I want to do is discuss some of the different types of samurai face armor, but specifically, I want to look at what some of the designs are made to represent, as well as theorize as to why. Like the past two videos I did recently on Samurai Helmets, the Kabuto, this video is done in partnership with channels Samurai and Ninja History and Sengoku Studies, who have each made really great videos on the topic of Samurai face masks already. I will leave a link to them down below. I highly recommend that you go check them out in accompaniment with this video. However, I also want to mention the video that Metatron did on this subject as well. It is an extremely good video that I also recommend watching. Through all of these videos, hopefully you can really broaden your understanding of the unique face masks of the samurai. So the first thing I want to do is just discuss a bit of terminology. It is easy to forget that samurai face masks were not just one clear design that stayed consistent, as there were various iterations and many would even have multiple removable parts and elements. Face armor itself, often referred to as mengu, min yoroi, minoshita, and probably the most famous, minpo, has its origins perhaps as early back as the Heian period, but that does not mean it always took the form of an actual mask, as some of the earliest designs, like that of the Hapuri, was really just a covering for the sides and forehead, and in plenty of old art was usually just seen to have been worn by foot soldiers rather than fully mounted samurai. However, the common idea of samurai face masks that we know of did not really come about until much later, largely seen to have been popularized during the Sengoku period. Yet it should be mentioned that there is still some debate today over how much they were actually used. Although, one theory using archaeology suggests a decrease in facial wounds during this time may prove that masks indeed were utilized. It is by this point we start to see more of the hanbo, which covered mostly the chin, and then later the hoate, which extended up more to the cheeks. If you've seen the video I did discussing the evolution and overview of samurai armor, the hoate is something I actually messed up on in that video, as I confused it with the actual term that was to represent the full mask itself. Now, the structure of the hoate later leads to the addition of a nose piece that could be attached, this design covering from the nose down. It is this style that gets most commonly referred to as a minpo, or minoshita, and is by far the most famous of the samurai mask designs. But besides that, the last version I want to look at before we start diving a bit more into deeper meanings is that of the somen, which is usually a full mask that covers the entirety of the face. This seems to be the most impractical for combat, and I am one to believe that they likely were more decorative or ceremonial, and that many of them likely originated during the Edo period after the wars had ended. That's not to say they were not used in battle completely before this point, but just when you compare it to more practical designs, I don't see it necessarily being favored, especially when there is already an active debate over how much masks were used at all. Full face masks can be tricky, not just for Japanese designs, but really for any type of armored face mask throughout history. This is because if they don't press tightly enough against the face itself, it can obstruct vision. Not to mention the fact that it can also trap in heat and hamper breathing and communication. We can see that these issues were likely thought about when crafting plenty of somen, because many of them have multiple removable parts, and could be worn however the samurai wanted to wear it. The most practical design does appear to be that of the minpo or minoshita, the face mask that covers from the nose down or below the eyes, however you want to define it. Now, most masks were indeed made of metal, but there are some designs that instead use hardened rawhide. This means that although it likely would not have been enough to stop damage from a direct blow, it still was 100 times better than having one's face fully exposed. 
That's not to say it was without its flaws either. As other videos have already pointed out, it could become very hot under the mask, and having the actual nose piece attached didn't help that, as the nose helped not only trap in heat, but also could potentially obstruct view. Besides that, due to their size and shape, they don't necessarily fit the face perfectly, and could be very cumbersome to wear in the heat of battle. So really, we can see it suffering from some of the same issues that a full mask would have. However, the fact that it only went from below the eyes would mean a world of difference. But with these cons stated, there was also some very important pros to wearing one as well. Besides offering some level of protection to one's face, it also looked very striking, specifically when the nose piece was attached and you'd be able to view the mask in full. Samurai masks were often made to resemble different things, and in many cases are very frightening, looking almost demonic or monstrous. And this was a definite intimidation factor that was purposeful on the battlefield. But what are some of these styles actually supposed to represent? Before we go any further, I want to mention that I will be using information and illustrations from a great article on Mimpo put together by Gunsen History. I will leave a link to it down below. Now as samurai helmets grew more elaborate, as we can see from the Kawari Kabuto, so too did the look of face masks. The more plain looking earlier masks started to turn very stylized. One of the most famous examples is that of the Fierce Face Reisei. This is the typical design that incorporates a scowling face with wrinkles and varying facial hair. We have to remember that facial hair was likely very common among the samurai, at least prior to the Edo period, as many adorned themselves with mustaches and beards. Many high-ranking samurai likely took pride in their facial hair and the grooming of it, and this has sort of led to many common depictions of samurai, pre-Edo period, incorporating fabulous mustaches. It is this facial hair that has become very iconically placed on the masks they wore as well, almost wearing it as a status symbol. And this can then sort of get into a conversation about a samurai's actual mask made directly to, perhaps, resemble the samurai himself. However, not all masks incorporated facial hair, like other designs we know of, such as the Ryubu and Oie. These were typically hairless and smooth, perhaps appearing more youthful or noble by contrast, yet still, due to their shapes and sizes, looking frightening nonetheless. This of course then paves the way to more feminine or playful designs that were occasionally used as well. Yet on the opposite side of that, there was also the Okina style, which was made to resemble an old man, incorporating more wrinkles and even full beards. However, what I truly want to highlight lastly are the designs that were specifically meant to look monstrous, often in reference to deities and spirits. Now a fair portion of these come in the Somain full face style, which once again I am hesitant to believe was really ever used that often on the battlefield, and were likely more artistic or ceremonial pieces. But others appear to be pretty genuine, such as the Tengu inspired designs that include a long and unsettling nose. There is also a specifically more angular version meant to depict a crow Tengu. Tengu are important to reference, because most practical Mimpo designs that are made to look specifically demonic are generally made to look like various forms of Tengu. For those of you who don't know, Tengu are mystical creatures, present almost in all forms of Japanese folklore and religion, and often they can be interpreted in different ways, such as mischievous or militant. There is even a popular legend that it was a Tengu spirit who appeared to teach the young Minamoto no Yoshitsune the art of swordsmanship. It makes sense that samurai would use the fascinating yet frightening appearance of the Tengu as a means to intimidate their foes on the battlefield. In fact, Tengu masks are very popular Japanese masks in general, outside of Mimpo as well. Now, there is certainly a lot more we could get into regarding samurai face masks, but for the most part I just wanted to discuss the look of them and get a bit deeper into what they represent. And once again, if you want to learn more, I highly recommend you go and check out those other videos I have linked down below. Samurai face masks are truly one of the most interesting parts of their armor, and the general image of samurai that often pops into our heads whenever we think of them. And I think so often we sort of just forget to really look deeper and understand what the masks may represent, as there are so many modern interpretations and reproductions that almost go overboard to show a demonic or vicious look. It just goes to show that the face masks of the samurai continue to inspire artists and craftsmen to this very day, despite how close to reality many new representations stray. 
It's just fascinating how the masks they wore have become so heavily linked to the general image we have of the samurai. But with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.